Yo, what up? What up? It's your boy, H2O. That's right. I had to quiet down because this excitement that I feel, we about to blow up. I can't hold it. It's your boy, H2O. Welcome to the New Balance Podcast. And listen, I, I, listen, I am locked and I'm loaded. I have our special guest in the building. I'm not wasting any time. We'll talk maybe on the end, but we got to delve into this today. New Balance Podcast. Show some love to my sister, Holly Barber Gatlin. What up, Holly? What's up? What's up? Thanks for having me. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. You're so welcome. Um, We talked about this uh, a little bit, and uh, I'm so glad today is here. Mm -hmm. Um. I got to shout out the, the New Balance uh, family. Thank you for your support. Thank you for rocking with us. And we know without you, this does not happen. So shout out to you guys. Thank you for following um, and supporting. Um, this has been such a great weekend for me. Y'all know I have a, I got a college graduate in the house. And then next week, that's right. Next week, this young lady, she'll be graduating from high school as well. So I'm riding on high and uh, not just that, but family's good. And then this assignment God has given me, um, those that know me, man, I'm a big people person. And God has just been so gracious to me to just flood people in and out of my life. And this young lady is no different than the others. Um, I guess now our relationship probably about three years now. Um, through it. So, so, yeah, something like that through a work relationship. And as my grandmother says, sometimes you just need to open up and talk about who you are. And she and I both did that and began to find out she is this incredible young lady who is full of vision, who is full of purpose. And I love this. She is full of love just for people, just for people. And I promise you, as we have this conversation, you'll begin to see that um, as we begin to talk. So uh, without any further ado, shout out one more time, my sister that's on, Miss Holly. What up, Holly? What's up? What's up, Harry? Thank you for having me. Congratulations for your graduate. Oh. That was us last week. We graduated. So we are we're in this graduate vibe, like yes. these graduate parents. So we, yes. we're happy about this. We are happy about this. Um, you know, Holly, um, you know, graduation, you know, uh, without us telling those that rock with us, they may know. But when we think about when we graduated and uh, not more than just thinking about uh, when we graduated, but we think about the era of life the world was in, where things were. And when we look at our babies and we watch them walk across the stage and we think about the world that they're in and the world that they're going to be living and functioning in, it begins to just kind of press on your heart in terms of just different questions, different ideas, like, okay, Lord, um, did my mom have these questions about me? Or did they have these questions about us, right? Yes, And I I can almost um, surely say they did, right? Mm -hmm. And rightfully so. But you and I know that um, no matter what walk of life, whether people um, say it, whether people agree with it, or maybe they have a different formula formula for trying to get to the place. I believe most people wake up in the morning, they're either trying to figure out their purpose, find their purpose, attach with somebody that has purpose, or they're chasing after a purpose. Um, Mm -hmm. This is a new series that we're starting and we're labeling, we're calling this series living inside of what's inside of you. Um, Miss Holly is definitely an individual who is living inside of what's inside of her. And um, I, alluded, I alluded to it a little earlier. Um, she's a big people's person. And man, she's just this, this ball of joy, this ball, this ball of happiness. I don't care how many times if I come there once a day, three or four times a week, I know I'm going to get the same thing from her, her staff. <laughs> It's just a great place to be. And I think we need more of that in the world, Miss Holly. I really do. And I thought it'd be cool for us to sit down and just really break down what that looks like. I know, you know, we're used to talking or hearing about, you know, the life of an actor, the life of a ball player, the life of mm-hmm. the senator, all these. And rightfully so. They, I think they have some amazing lives. But this is cool to be able to have this conversation with you. Um as as my grandmother said, we just 
two hometown people from the hometown. Amen, amen. And amen. there's nothing wrong with that, you're right? Because I have a right. very a, a wide range of viewers and whomever you are, I think you should get to the point where you can figure out and find out and live inside of what's living inside of you. So with yes. that said, Holly, um, kind of tell the people a little bit just about who you are, what you do in life. And um, I think that's a great place for us to dive in. Okay. Okay. So um, I was a teacher for over a decade. Um, I ended up being moved to be the leader of a religious school a couple of years ago. And it's very important because I went from having a classroom setting to having um, being essentially the principal of, of, a, of a small Catholic early childhood center. Yes. Um, and I remember in that move thinking, this is not the plan. Uh, I don't want to work at a religious school. It was the church where I grew up. Um, it just wasn't in the plan. I just, I was a teacher. I stayed in my box. I knew I eventually wanted to do something else. Um, and one day, one of the parents, he came to see me and he said, I, I need to take you to lunch. Um, and where I come from, these are grown men. I was like, wait, take me to lunch. What, what are we doing? What, what's going on? Where's your wife? Where's this? Uh, and as we started talking, he said, you know, my, my wife told me, I said, I wanted to invest in building a school. And my wife laughed. She said, you don't know anything about building a school, but you know who does? Holly. I was the principal over his kid's school. Mm. Um, and lo and behold, one thing led to another. And um, they said, you know what? We want to build a school. We want to build a company, a, 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 an essentially a system of early childhood centers. And we think that you have whatever's inside of you is what we want to see in schools. Um, and I, they did not know, but I was actually in the middle of applying to start a charter school. And as I got into the process, a woman told me one day, she sat me down. She said, now look, um, you need to make a choice. I was in Boston um, sitting down with the executive director and she said, you can either choose one or the other. You can be a mom and have a family mm. or you can be an executive. And I remember thinking, not the God I know. Um, how, how is it that in order to get this blessing, you have to give up these blessings? Mm. So I told her, I said, I need some time to think about it. Flew back to Houston and up approaches this, this, this other opportunity. Here comes God. Um, and as, as the situation developed itself, I began to realize, you know, this is something that really matters to me. This is something, I would be in a classroom with students. I used to teach second grade. I taught fourth grade. I taught high school, college. And every time I met a kid that people were like, oh, this kid is so difficult. I remember working with a kid and thinking, I don't think they respect you because you don't respect them. I don't have the same problem with that kid. So as I dug into it a little bit more, I was going to graduate school as I dug in, there was something missing from the beginning of education. I would meet people along the line in their education. Maybe the kid was in elementary, high school, college, but there was something missing, <clears throat> excuse me, from the foundation of their education. So as we begin to work on our school, I realize, you know what, I want to be at the beginning. I want to make sure that children are able to find the light inside of them. Mm. And ironically, um, that then you approach me with this podcast and I'm like, oh, this is it. Because the name of our school is Lux. And Lux is, is Latin for enlightenment or light. Um, and I chose the name and the flame and the branding because I wanted people to find the light inside of them. Um, I didn't think it was fair that some people had just missed the opportunity. Um, they had just not been asked the right questions. They had not um, been listened to enough for someone mm. to help them sift through um, what they were interested in. How come you can't self-regulate? How come you hate school? What happened? What kind of environment were you in? Teachers. Um, why didn't people invest in teachers? You want teachers to invest in children, but no one was investing in teachers. So long story short, that was the premise um, for the company I ended up creating. So I am the executive director of operations for the Lux Schools. Um, and that's schools with the S because we are not stopping. Um, we are working on the second location. We'll go up and up and up, but really we are trying to reach um, young families, young children, 
um, in what's considered a, a quality education desert um, in Houston, Manville, Rocher, and Pearland. Um, we are called an educational desert, one of the biggest cities. Uh, we're desert. Uh, we don't have high quality early childhood education. Um, so we are working um, in that aspect to become again, the cornerstone of the community. There was a time mm. when you wanted to know who to vote for, what to think, you asked your church. Um, when school said the weather was bad and we were closing, that was it, you didn't go mm -hmm. outside. Right. Um, but along the way, school has been kind of put into a, um, almost a laughing stance. Um, you know, teachers don't take that as a vocation sometimes. So that's what we're working on, changing the dynamic um, of early childhood in hopes that it changes a lot in our community. Um, just, just overall, just making a change in the community, one family at a time, one set of small children at a time. Mm. Um, I work with anywhere from birth to um, five years old after um, that late birthday, September 1st. And then we have after schoolers up to fourth grade. Um, and I didn't know, I didn't really call it a ministry right. until a friend of mine, uh, we, we reached out and we were, you know, catching up. She's a mentor of mine. She said, you do realize that God just enlarged your territory, right? Yes. Uh, she said, you know, he took you from a small classroom to a small school and then doubled that in size and gave you your own schools and staff and things like that. So um, it is a working um, effort to help people live inside of what's inside. Mm. So, okay. All right. I, I told y'all. That's I told what we do. <laughs> I told y'all. I, I just want to say I told y'all a couple of things. Oh, my. That is so powerful. Now, those who have been watching, Holly doesn't know. I didn't say anything to Holly, but we just ended a podcast series on education from the inside out. With, mm. It's a four-part series. Holly just touched on so many facets of what we already have been talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Had I known to that depth, y'all know I would have had Holly on the pod. I'd have had her right in there. But this is perfect. This is perfect. I have no way of setting it up. You know, uh, our producer that lives way up high thought it's enough of us to show that he... <laughs> is concerned about you. Yeah. He's putting these podcasts, shows, episodes, yeah. ministry moments, whatever you want to label this, you have to know God is at work. I'm not intelligent enough to string them together like that. I told you, God brings the people into my yeah. life. I trust and we move. So I want to say that first. The second thing is I wanted to get into some questions. You've already, you've already ran with the first one. Like how did you choose the life or the passion you live in now. You said something so powerful. And I think if you're listening, there are some of you on here who are chasing it, right? Like you're looking for that thing. You're chasing the passion. You believe that this is it or it will lead to it. Holly said something so powerful. She was invited out to brunch or dinner. And I don't know if it was a husband or a wife, but they was like, what's inside of you is going to be good. There we go. We should be back. There we go. I don't know. I might have. I might have slapped the pulpit like the country sometimes. Sometimes, right? Okay. I'm gonna. Re I'm gonna re repeat a couple things. I said what was so incredible. Just in case we missed it. Um. Whether it was the husband or the wife, one of them said to you that what's on the inside of you <laughs> is exactly what we need for the thing that we have on the inside of us. Amen. Um, you know, when God has a blessing for you, yeah. you know, we, we have a tendency, um, especially those of us that are more dominant in personalities, we have a tendency to feel like we need to help God be mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. um, I was somewhere totally different. 
doing something totally different. Um, but I did attempt to like keep my head down. God lead me, order my steps, order my help steps. me, help me. This is what I have. Um, I tell people all the time in every part of the Bible, when Jesus was about to work a miracle, he took what they had, blessed it and multiplied it. Right. That's all I got. Yeah. This is all I got. Um, I can teach. I can follow instructions. Um, I love kids. This is what I have right. with my hands out. Right. Um, and it's ironic because um, it was first the husband, but the wife had met me on a whole other occasion. And God put these two people on the same wavelength about something I had nothing, I had no knowledge of. Mm. Um, but what was amazing to me, I was a kid when this really started. I was right. a kid, um, maybe turning about 30 years old. So I was still trying to find my vibe as, as a professional mm-hmm. um, as a young executive, whatever that was going to look like. But I really didn't have a big dream of like, hey, you're going to be the executive of your own company. I really was a teacher in a classroom. Like, I didn't see that. Um, but I'm grateful to God that he put a light on those things. Because I, I, I wouldn't, my passion would have still lived out in the classroom, but mm. I wouldn't have seen it the way that he saw it. I had no, I didn't have that kind of vision. Mm-hmm. I had a vision to work with what he gave me. I did my best with what he gave me. And he right. said, okay, well, now I want you to do it somewhere else, somewhere bigger. But I really had no, um, as, a, as a young person, I really had no idea to run a company to do none. None. Uh, people ask me every day, like, this is your school. And I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> this is. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> They're like, on. like, you manage it or no, babe. When no, the no, no. This, this, built, when the beans my- were built. I was Mine. praying over the, the soil, the workers came every week, wrote on the beams and Bible verses, walked. And I remember the construction people were like, what is she doing? Baby, she's praying. <laughs> she's praying. She's praying for you, your family. I mean, we started during the pandemic, really. If you really want to think about that, a time when people were like, this is foolish. You're exactly right, because that's when I started, right before I started out there. Yeah, right we, I mean, the they pandemic. were like, this is a foolish idea. Schools right. are closing and you're opening. This is foolish. And I just remember saying like, this is what God told me to do. And I told him, I said, God, you know, this is my first. So it's yours. It's my tithe. It's yours. This one is yours. Whoever comes in these doors, goes out of these doors, they belong to you. You tell me what you need me to do and I'm going to do it. But mm. this is yours. Mm. Um, and that's really, I mean, we were, we went, I mean, you're, you're talking about creating a company, colors, branding, logos, spots, locations. I was going door to door, um, really like putting our name out there. And I remember right. being approached by people and they're being like, huh, this is cute. And this is what God told me to do. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, and then now looking at, you know, how many people we really interact with and minister with and whether it's delivery people, parents coming in, whether it's, you know, m- people that are, are coming to, to be employed there. God has orchestrated um, a team of, of really believers. He's brought them from everywhere to say, I need a place. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and, and this is what we're going to do. And I I'm humbled every day to uh, lead that group. That's a, that's a crazy um, thing. It's a crazy thing. <laughs> All because you decided that you was going to live inside of what's inside of you. Amen. I can't, I cannot make this up. Stress that if, enough. Listen, if you are listening, I don't know what your plans are. But you should travel very lightly, pack for the season that you're in, because in the brink of an eye, in the moment, in a, in a moment's notice, you will have the opportunity of your life. The question is, will you take the opportunity or will you sit back and ponder it for, yeah. um, you know, however long? Yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight years. And I can I'm speaking from being on both sides of the spectrum. I know what it's like to wait, ponder, uh, have the Gideon, throw the fleece out, God, with the fleece, da 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 Okay, turn, turn Galveston purple, all these things, right? And while we're chasing and waiting on these things, time is moving, and what God has to do, because I know it seems like we just, well, God is God, right? He never going anywhere, so he has time to wait. No, his agenda does not. Think about this. She opened her school during the beginning of the pandemic. Who does that? And I'm telling you, I work in the area and the um, 
it's always packed. There are always people coming in and out of there. There are more than enough children, workers. I'm telling you, now that I know that part of the story, I never knew any of that. Mm -hmm. I saw the Lux, didn't know what that meant. Now that I know it is a miracle right smack dab in the middle of Manville. Incredible. You shouldn't have never told me. I'm going to show enough be running my mouth now. It is a, listen, the miracle inside of Manville. That's really what we ought to, I might need to rename this podcast. Oh man, it's incredible. Now that I have that information. Um, like when I say passion, she has definitely given us the definition for that. How and why, you know, she chose to live in her passion. Um, I want you to speak to someone who is struggling a little bit, Holly. Um, I know I just gave a kind of a facetious example, but real time, whether mm -hmm. it's a mom that may be an empty nester, a mm -hmm. dad that's transitioning through these different careers, um, somebody that's an entrepreneur, but they may be afraid to stay, take the next step, um, or somebody that's just really sitting on the couch. They're kind of a hybrid of people, but speak to somebody who's just really contemplating living inside of what's living inside them, which is that passion. Talk to them, encourage them. Amen. Um, I'll tell you this, a principle that I live by okay. is that if you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. Okay. okay. I'm going to um, stop the podcast. I'm, I don't, I don't, even have enough, I don't even have enough preacher juice for this lady. Come on now, man. Okay. Let me, I'll so, wait. So I'm listen, to listen podcast. to why I live by this purpose. Wait, so many, a lot of people don't realize y'all I am a, I am, I'm, I'm divorced. Unfortunately, um, I am a single mom of three children. Mm. Okay. I'll so when this it. blessing came, I want you to think about this was the pandemic. So people were, my, I had my college student living at home. I had a young baby. Um, I had a, a, a child that was four or five when that was, I'm in the middle of this situation. And for people who were in, in, in a struggle during the pandemic, the, the enemy is real, y'all. Um, social media, the TV will make you think everybody is quarantined with somebody except you. Damn. I'm quarantined with children. I'm quarantined and trying to get things delivered and trying to work. I got somebody running across the screen. This is real. This was mm -hmm. my real life. Right. Um, but the truth of the matter is my business at that time was taking care of my children and providing for them. Right. I didn't have to... Um, Oh, well, I've got to abandon my responsibilities with my children to get this done. Let me tell you how cool God is, how smooth he is. When I got the job, um, I said, you know, I'm not sure I can manage um, um, getting them to, to, to someone to take care of them. And I need to be over here. And, and they say, you know what? Uh, we're going to find a nanny. For you. Mm. And somebody is going to come to your house and help you with your children. So that your older student can be online on, on school. I was still teaching online every morning. I was teaching children in English in China. I was teaching elementary school during the pandemic. And I was building a school. And they say, you know what? But so that you could work a few days a week, we're going to help you with somebody to take care of your children. Hear me carefully. I did not have to abandon my children. I did mm. not have to abandon my responsibility. When God got ready to do it for me. He did it for me yes. in all aspects of the business, because what I was doing, he gave me children to steward over, take care of them. Don't stop what you're doing. Don't stop teaching. Don't say, you know what? I have to side hustle. I'm not going to do my day job. Y'all being paid to do a job and not doing it is stealing. Yes, it is. Right? So I, I got to do my job. I had to get up in the morning, prepare lessons, do all that stuff. And as I was doing those things, he was doing his thing. Yes, because the skills that I needed, guess what? Who knew that you needed to know how to teach online? Because right. when I hired my staff, all of our professional development in the beginning was on Zoom. Wow. But I had learned because I was teaching for my classes. When yes. I started working to have a nanny at my house, I started paying attention. You know, this is the a quality educator. Let me write these things down. When I started interviewing teachers, I'm looking for these same characteristics. When I'm talking to parents about the need for childcare during the pandemic, guess what? If I'm not watching kids, first responders can't go back to work. My, no my, one my. can go back. So what happened is my passion grew 
in my desert season, in my season where I was working, where I was grinding, where we were stuck in the house, watching every commercial, we're all in it together. We're, right. all, you know, and your mind, I had to stay diligent with my purpose. Yes. I was praying. I cooked praying. I went to sleep praying because I saw, thought, who can get me out of here except for God? Yes. Who, who could help me? At that point, it was really so psychological and psych- psychological and spiritual warfare is real. It's very Mental real. Health is real. I used to very. have to think, I'm going to go take a walk outside because mm-hmm. it's just me and them. Let me get my head straight. So I never take out on them my own anxieties, my mm. own frustrations, my own disappointments. And the truth of the matter is, y'all, it's um, anytime you get that seed of faith, the enemy is coming for it. Yes, he is. He's yes, coming he for it. He's going to uproot it. He's going to make it seem like it's not for you. It's not for God doesn't. You're a single mom. Everybody thinks you should struggle. You're a single mom. You, you should be in the house with those. Kids. It's getting past what you're told. Mm-hmm. Right. And being mindful of what you take into your ear. faith comes by what you got. Yeah, I had to yes. listen to spiritual music. Yes, I had to yes, yes. Spiritual things over my children, myself, and get there. Take that time that he had me in the desert and say, OK, what are you doing with me? What do you want? Uh, what do you want me to do? Because I am not going to make it out of here without you. Yes. Um, and in that season, um, my disciplines, my my submission grew. Really, because what else could I be doing? If I had been mm. out and able to move around, I probably wouldn't have heard God as well either. Absolutely. The busyness of life. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you a second question, but you're already into it. What about your passion wakes you up and then drives you in life? You just described it. Like, is this, so, I don't want, I, I don't want to be deep. It's not deep for me. Can I just say this term? Yo, back up against the wall. Up against the wall. Like, I'm talking about pressed up. It's pressed. It's pressed. And what people, you know, people always say, God will use this for your testimony. Mm-hmm. But really, I almost want to say God will use that for your passion. Yes, he will. Yes, you will, he will be able to look at the people that God has put in your path and say, I have that same struggle. I've yeah. been in that same moment. I have that same drive. I see that in you. Let's do this together. Yes. Um, I remember mom saying, I'm a nurse. I work from seven to seven. Mm-hmm. I need somebody to take care of my kids because we are working 24 hour shifts. Mm. Um, I need someone. I'm a first responder. I need to get here at this. Okay. As we took all of our situations where our backs were against the wall, where we were pressed, what began to happen is I began to say, we can't fail. We can't, we can't, um, we can't back down because really what God has said is like, you are also essential. You know, that's our new term. Like this person is, no, baby, everybody's essential. Everybody everybody's yes. essential everybody and if you aren't doing your piece then an essential piece is missing mm. now watch this what you agree now with you're having your back up against the wall it was the best thing for you because through the situation god uses it not only to build your character not only to continue to build ethics and integrity and morals god shows you what's on the side what's on the inside it builds humility when you, when oh, you are, man. oh man, oh man, when you are humbled. I mean, you can, I mean, there are times when you can be this hot shot, everything's going well, but when, right. you are humbled, <laughs> when you are humbled, the first thing that happens is your hands flip up. Yeah. Yeah. How come? What happens? Your yeah. hands start to go up. And if you're not careful, your hands will go up and you'll really start getting yourself into a place where spiritually he is pulling, he is pruning, he is, you know, getting some of those things that are distractions out of the way. Right. So that you really have only him to focus on. Yes. Didn't that done you know, it, 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 your back is against the wall. Let me tell you something. When your back's against the wall, you also can't run. You can't. You can't run when you, well, a lot of us in purpose, we run for a long time for a and long, we take down, time. we take a lot of collateral damage with this <laughs> while we're running. Oh, if you've oh, ever man. watched them, you know, I worked in football. If you ever watch somebody run, who's really running with some, some, some oomph behind them, they're going to take down everybody in the line. That's it. 
That's so while it. you're running from your purpose, you can be knocking down your children, your oh, family, wow. your neighbors, oh, wow. your Say people. It. You're knocking down so many people because speak. you're running. Oh man, speak, speak. But sis. if you slow down and you get oh. your back against the wall, I can't go anywhere. Can't go nowhere. Oh. Oh. I can't go anywhere. Oh. So you stop running. And once man. you stop running, like he says, in all times, that voice, that quiet voice, it wasn't in the storm. Yes. It wasn't in the wind blowing. It's wasn't. that tiny burning. But you start to get, stuff get real quiet when things going wrong. Come on. <laughs> Your friends stop talking. <laughs> you stop talking. It gets real quiet. You turn the tea. You know, when you're about to run out of gas, you turn the radio off and you roll down. You window. Things get real down, serious. Like, man, Lord, no, please let me make it. Oh. Come Things on. get real. You start listening. Like, is that the car? Is the car running out the gas? You uh -huh. start listening. Re your ear gets real fine, too. Mm -hmm. When you get pressed. Right. And but it's I'll in that moment that your passions kind of get cultivated. Mm. What I love about it is, you know, the scripture says, you know, it was good that I've been afflicted. It's good. Like some afflictions. I know everything we want to blame on the devil. We want to blame on other people, um, we want to blame, blame, blame. But mm -hmm. some of this affliction is about you living inside of what's on the inside of you. And the only way to get that thing on the inside out is some good old fashioned affliction. affliction. Now for, for all of us, affliction, that affliction can look differently, and can manifest in different ways. But if you're listening to Holly, you hear some of the affliction that she had to experience and went and, and um, she went through um, going through some of that affliction. Once again, the, the people that are listening, I know some of my viewers, some of mine that are listening, they have some afflictions that they're dealing with right now. Now, obviously um, when you look in different, maybe uh, spaces, there are some, there is some upward movement, upward, upward movement of some things and you see some things changing, but we know we are still in the fight of our lives, yeah. right? And so people, um, they're having to still try to figure it out. So case in point, um, if you choose to, some people may have come to the conclusions, well, you know what, I can stop wearing my mask now. And, and this is not about if you should wear a mask or if you shouldn't. My point is, you've come to a place where I feel pretty comfortable, whether I've had the vaccinations or whatever, but it's, 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 a, um, it's a sign or it's a statement in your life that I'm moving forward in some areas. Just like the taking off of that particular mask, there are other areas in our, in our lives that we mask or we, we play charades or we hide behind. It's, it's like in the garden, <laughs> Adam, <laughs> he sold him some stuff together to hide himself. And so during this pandemic, a lot of people yeah. have went into a hiding mode, if you will. And if you were not careful, that season of hiding or that season of putting fig leaves on a mask, it will last longer than what it was intended to, right? And it's really not, that's not designed to grow us and shape us in that way. It's designed to stop us right and keep those things that are on the inside of us in there what would you say to someone who's dealing with that holly and you know how do you how do you talk them from behind those fig leaves um you know we we focus we talk a lot about um the time in the desert okay you know okay. that that they spent years in the desert y'all for what mm. it was essentially an 11 day journey 11 days come on uh, you know um you can stay in a season way longer than God ever intended for you to stay Yeah, because you won't unmask because you won't deal with those things. You know, when I, um, when I'm working with young families, when I'm working with young children, I always think in the concept of like, um, there are things that we have in generations. Oh my goodness. Talk about that. It. We don't quite acknowledge. And right, right now I'm I'm not just talking, I mean, let's talk young families. Let's talk about uh, minorities. Let's talk about everybody though has this, but I'm specifically talking to us. We will have things mm -hmm. that need to be dealt with. Yes. But we won't talk about them. Not at all. We, we have some cross-generational issues yes. with transparency. A child can be dealing with something 
Meanwhile, the grandmother knows the child in between, the parent also dealt with that something. Absolutely. And the child before that dealt with that something. But if we each generation, we don't acknowledge it, we don't get the mental, the mental support, mental health, we don't work on that. We don't um, uncover some of the things that we have been dealing with all along. We will stay in a season, in a cycle, a cycle. Um, way longer than we're supposed to. Absolutely. Um, when we're working with young families, you know, we have a tendency to, let's take, I was a young parent. Okay. Right. Um, when, when you're a young parent, I had someone to sit me down and tell me, you're going to be the black sheep of our family. You're, you ain't, you're never going to make it. And I always remember that thought because that if you thought I was too young to be a, a parent, don't you think I was too young for you to tell me my life was over? Absolutely. Well, don't you think I was too young for that conversation? Absolutely. Instead of saying, you know, you have an aunt that also had a child when she was young and look at her now. Yes. We can do this as a community. We can do, you know, I know so-and-so and 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 it, it they said the story was going to go like this, but you know what? They showed it didn't have to. So for this house, for me and my house, we're going to pray through that. We're going to work through that. That's one thing I have to give my parents. There was never a conversation that I wasn't going to go to college, that right. I wasn't going to be. My folks, my mom said, if she wasn't asking you to buy diapers at our house, that was none of your business. My and my they mom. made sure there was a way for me to be who I was going to be. Mm -hmm. I also had to be free to be a child. My parents had to be established enough to say, you know what? You still be a child. It wasn't flipped. I wasn't taking care of my parents. My parents were taking care of me. Mm -hmm. And I think in our generational issues, sometimes we've got almost a disorder. Yes. And here's what's funny about the pandemic. The pandemic stripped us of some of that disorder. Yes, it did. And we're beginning to reorder. Mm -hmm. Right. We, 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 you, you, it's hard to be an absent parent if nothing is open. Absolutely. It's hard to, it's, it's hard Speak. to not know what's going on with your children at school. If now you're the teacher, Speak. if now you're sitting next to the child on zoom, you starting to realize, you know what? He don't follow instructions. Seriously. It wasn't just the teacher. It He's not following instructions. Hello. So, sometimes. Can you hear me? <laughs> No, I'm saying hello. Oh, hello. I mean, yeah, hello. right. So, I mean, so, so sometimes you get closed. You know, people have a lot more respect for other people's jobs now right. that we have to do some of what the convenience yes. were, right? But you you have to have transparency right. and multi-generational cooperation. When when young couples are, are, are having a problem, where are their parents? Absolutely. Where are their grandparents? The people who were successfully married in their church community, where, where are all these people? Absolutely. I love it. Because we're, we're in a, in a plugged in, like we got this in our house, but y'all what the pandemic kind of showed us was we were all struggling. Absolutely. And Once you again. figured out your pod who you were going to quarantine with and you saw them and you got support from them, but we realized like everybody, had everybody. everybody, everybody, um, we, we started looking at, you know, mental health and things like that. Now these things are important because if you're not careful, I will work with a young child. And as we're talking, as the parents and I are talking, parents are like, you know what? I also had this issue at school. Absolutely. But Come my on. parents didn't maybe believe in that. You know, my family's from Louisiana. We don't always believe in everything. And I have to tell them, no, y'all, this is real. Yes. I really do have a child that goes to occupational therapy because now I've learned better. Mm. You don't just beat them into that. Sometimes they uh -oh. need a little bit more support. There we go. Stop right there. I can't. Listen, I can't, I cannot orchestrate this. You, you hear Holly on here talking. Holly has gone through, it's almost she started from the beginning of the year and she was going through every series I've spoken about up until right now. Y'all hear her talking about the mental health. Before education, we just did a what? Seven week on mental health. So listen, I can't ask you the question. You're already in it. Name two things or two ways how we can help make families and communities better. You just talked about the number one thing. Mm -hmm. We have to look at the thing that's been in our generation. We have to look at the generation, whether it's a curse, whether it's an iniquity or whether it's an open door. We cannot close a blind eye to it. We cannot turn our back and pretend it does not happen. We cannot say that's happened at the school. They got that from school or they picked it up from somebody else. No, no, no. When or the TV. Look at, or they got it off the TV. No, no, no. When you look back, 
two generations, Uncle Sammy was doing the exact same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same and that thing. transparency is next. Y'all, we've got to talk more. Yes. We need to talk more. Call your mama and ask her about when you were in school. Absolutely. Call and ask about your sisters and brothers. Talk. Absolutely. Call and talk. Because the funny thing is, you know, we do this as parents. When you're, let's, I have sons, I have a son and I have two daughters. When your daughter meets someone, there are things that you're like, mm -mm, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. But your right. son can have the same red flag and we'll protect that. Absolutely. We'll protect it. But if, but if, if our daughters are, are going to be dating the young men we're raising, the Ooh. young men we are raising <laughs> right now, then raise them like you want somebody to marry. And if your daughters are being raised and you want them to have these strong men, these strong cornerstones, then what are we doing as dads? As grandma, mm. what are mm. we doing? Because the same expectation for your children, we ought to be living in that, right? So it's not just transparency and cross-generational support, but also a standard of excellence. Absolutely. And put in the, put in the, I know it's, it's a cuss word now, put in this cuss word, accountability. Accountability, disciplines. Somebody, your disciplines. somebody that's going to hold me accountable. Absolutely. You're, you know, they always say in the business world, they say you are a reflection of the five closest people to you. Ooh. You should sit down. You remember, you remember when I think it was T-Mobile or one of the phone calls, you had five people you could call and they yep. say, oh, you're in my top five. Yep. Start thinking <laughs> about that. Start thinking about that. You need to have, oh, I have multi-generational, um, multi-discipline mentors. Right. I have a mentor in education. I have a right. mentor in finance. I have a mentor in 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 being a wife, and I'm not a wife yet. Oh, because because why? Because it it says you're preparing. that. Oh, stop you're it. preparing. Stop it. Stop I, I stop study it. under stop a it. first lady that that is already leading a community, so that I learn the disciplines I want to have. I need to look at um, who I want to be. The people around. I've got pastors around. Who do I want to be like? Absolutely. Iron and sharpens iron, not, not plastic and iron, not, um, not wood. Um, and not, iron oh. sharpens iron. You need to look at who's around you because you know what? Your kids are watching who's around you. Oh, they watching all day long. And your I just, neighbors are watching who's around you. Listen, we just told them, listen, they, they hear what you say, but they're going to imitate what they see. They're going period. to imitate it. Are you studying? Do they see you in the word? Do they oh, see man. you? Um, um, doing, you know, I, I got ready to, I said, oh, I need to jump online. I need, I have to, a conversation with Harry and my child just graduated with a degree in Catholic studies and Spanish. She studied religion. She wants to be either a chaplain or a mid, but she, and mm -hmm. people always ask, how did you get there? And she says, but my mom, bingo, the child that I thought wasn't watching, wasn't listening, wasn't to is literally walking into her ministry this early at 20. And I'm thinking, my mom said, but you were in ministry at that age. Absolutely. Not even Absolutely. realizing it. I thought Absolutely. I was just the cool kid that people followed the church and I'm going to church. So if y'all want to roll, let's roll. But Absolutely. now I'm looking at, hey, he set you apart all along. Long time ago. So when Incredible. you are looking at, you know, what we need to do better, setting that standard of excellence in your prayers, yeah, in your finances, in your personal decorum, oh, your Lord. discipline. How do we present? My staff always says, you get up too early. I need to get up and pray for all the things I'm going to encounter throughout the day. Absolutely. I got to deal with my people. That's it. And then my kids, I got, it's my responsibility to cover them. To set I'm that not, tone. I'm, I'm not dependent on 911. I'm not dependent on, you know, whatever. I am in this house. I'm I'm the president. I'm I'm the police force. I'm the I'm the accountant. I'm the bank. We are all of those things. And like you said, through this, just the simplicity of obeying, God said to pray, to cover them, right? Before they go to bed at night, come on, Amen. spread the thing out. And it can be, we can, what's the word I'm looking for? We can, um, um, the scripture talks about how the kids, how the kids are like arrows in the hand in of a quiver. Mother. And arrows a, in a quiver. quiver, but they're like the arrows in the hand of a mighty man. In other yes. words, we can take those arrows and we can on purpose point them Give where them they direction. should go. 
Absolutely. You can give them direction. And parents, you know, it's, it's amazing to me. I often hear people say, honor your mother and father. And I always say to people, keep reading because it says, parents, don't, don't tempt your children. Don't give your child a reason to act out of order. If I have no order and my children are out of order, that's on me. Hello. That's on me. What disciplines have I modeled for them? Not just spoken to them, not just beat into them or whatever context. What have I modeled in my standard of excellence for my own disciplines? Do you see me get my check and spend my check? Or do you see me pay tithes and then put it where I pay our bills and then what's left over? What disciplines have I shown you? Do I have parties all night during the week? Am I giving, am I Mm. telling you there is no structure to going to school you don't really have to go to bed you don't really have to study you don't re- if you don't see me study why would you study mm. if you don't see me get up and go to work or dress for work even if I'm working for home if you don't see me set a tone what tone will you have mm, my Lord. so when you have kids yelling and they're this and they're that you know I guess you know my daughter she my six-year-old she wrote a, a thing and I said what do you want to be when you grow up and she said I want to be a mom and they asked her, what, what, why do you want to be a mom? She said, because my mom is a mom. That's her job. And I never thought about, you know, leading schools, leading education. My child thinks I'm a professional mom. Absolutely. She never, I never missed school events. I never, so she just thought I was just a mom on 10. You know, she didn't realize mm-hmm. like, that she has a whole other job. But that means that I haven't taken anything away from her to develop right. myself by taking care of her. God has developed me in the process. So when you mm-hmm. start thinking about, you know, your developments, your passions, your giving a standard of excellence to God first, and then to the things in your life, mm-hmm. what will happen is you will, you will be, you will either water or plant, right? You, you begin to, to work in the soil. God will make some growth. Yes, he is. He's going to definitely just give the increase. Get, get out the way. Oh man. Oh man. And you just get out the way and be ready to grow. I, I feel like I've grown just in the last 45 minutes. I don't know if it's taller, wider, smarter, but exactly. I've known I've grown. There's been some growth. If you've been listening to this conversation, growth is for you too. I'm mm-hmm. going to encourage you. Um, I don't know how you're watching or listening, but what I want you to do is after you're listening to it, whether you turn right back around and listen. I want you to listen to it again. And when you listen to it, I want you to ask God to speak. God has been speaking this whole podcast. He's dropping dimes. Oh my God. Yes. He's given, <laughs> he's given code to lock. He given code to things that have been locked just on this podcast. This has been so refreshing. I want to talk a little more about ways we can help and uh, make families and communities better because I see you doing it at the Lux, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously that is one way that we can help make families and communities better. And let me put this plug in. It's not a shame, a shameless plug. Um, If you're anywhere close to the Manville, Rocher and Pearland area, and you are looking for childcare, I'm telling you, look no further. The address is 2555 County Road 58, Manville, Texas, 775884. Uh, 775887. 87. 87. I should know the zip code, right? But listen, it's called the Lux. The Lux School. You can find us online. (laughs) It is the fire sitting right smack dab in the middle of Manville. What did I say earlier? It was the miracle in Manville. That's exactly what it is. And they are, they are changing lives. They are changing the temperature in a community. And where you, when you begin to talk about how they said that literacy and education and childcare was a desert, I beg to differ. That if, there was a, if there was a desert in Manville, I know there is a part of Manville where the river and the water is flowing, right? And the river is about to be flowing in another part of Manville, right? Very, very yeah, we're, we're we're working on that. We you we're working we, on yeah. it. We're working on it. So actually, so Lux is at seven seven five seven eight, and and it's on it's on County Road fifty eight. But we're looking to go out towards like Highway six, um, yes. and bring in a little bit more of the um, 
more of the residential side, more of the um, open countryside to bring it in. Um, and really, we're, we're, we're trying to um, be a cornerstone for communities. You said, how can we do that? Um, yes. I'm, I'm a child care advocate um, for the state of Texas and a, a child care health consultant. And really what my job is on the state level is to know resources for families. Yes. I think sharing knowledge is a huge thing. You know, people, yes. um, we've got people who um, overnight have to take care of other people's children, um, have, to, have to take care of a child that they weren't anticipating. Finding um, resources for the things you need, um, good doctors, a medical home, um, getting, getting services, um, mental health services, knowing how to get children um, academic assessments, what happens, should I put them in Head Start, um, child care, pre-K, whatever. The earlier you can get a child into a school system, the better. Because yes. what that does is give you access to resources. Yes, it, does. it gives you access to people who professionally develop almost a Rolodex of family resources. You need right. a good pediatric dentist. You need a good Sometimes, you know, we raise children in isolation. You might move away from your mom and dad. And so it's just you, this young family or mm -hmm. this individual with these children. And you're not as connected. And I know we have um, blogs and Facebook and Instagram, but being connected to people who have studied this craft and right. this passion and this ministry, and they have resources that they can get you that you could share with other people. Right. I think that getting children into school early, that's something that the, the, the pandemic kind of hushed us out of. I know people were a little afraid, but the truth is um, there's language support, literacy support, social skills, um, regulation. What happens when they have a tantrum? Do they know how to calm themselves down? Absolutely. Because quite frankly, as raising a young black son, I need him to have emotional regulation so he yes. doesn't get shot at. Say that um, one more time. Say that, know, please. I Slow want that down and say that one more have, time. We want our children to have emotional regulation, self-regulation, so that they're not um, approached when they are out of character in the wrong moment with people who don't know that this is a kid from Sunday school with a good home. They're looking at you when you are upset. That's it. And if the world judged us on our worst moment, y'all, that's the end of some of our children's lives. Absolutely. Some of our children's lives. So teaching that regulation, how to articulate in conflict, that, yes. is the, that is the key skill of an executive. You want me to tell you something? That's the truth. Being able to articulate your emotions, even when you are frustrated, that is what sets apart the top 10% mm. is being able to articulate even when you are upset. Incredible. Because if you teach a child how to take deep breaths, calm down, you know, get get yourself um, composed and still present well. Yes. And we begin to negate the, the angry black stereotype. The, Absolutely. The unraised. The un, you know, we are seen as so unraised. No, we're raised. Absolutely. We have emotions, but we're mm -hmm. raised. And if we can work on that at home, then in the community, our children, our adults, our young people, our families have mm -hmm. a better chance. Then Absolutely. we're talking in our homes instead of dividing them. Absolutely. Then we're oh, talking man. in our churches instead of leaving them. So, so that yes. emotional regulation, school does that for you. Absolutely. Early childhood does that, you know, getting connected to the right people. It does that for you. Absolutely. Ooh, man, this is some great stuff. Did you hear the word though? Resource. Yeah. She is a resource and she has resources. So we're talking specifically about child care, child adv advocacy, right? But whatever your area is, I want you to think the same thing. No longer am I just going to be looking for a resource, but I'm going to become the resource, I resource. and yeah. then I have resources. That's the purpose of this podcast. That's the purpose of You Can't Stomp This Blaze. That's the mm -hmm. purpose of that fire. That's the purpose of strength mm -hmm. for today, sustenance for tomorrow. We are a resource and we have resources. Now God has blessed us with a new resource. It's Holly. Oh my God. I, I'm listen. Look at God. <laughs> Look, I'm telling y'all right now, I don't know how and when, but I'm getting back on Holly's schedule. She's coming back. She's going to be back. Um, Anytime. Like my whole, just listen to you talk now about the children and their parents. I can't, if I could show you my heart is just, it's, it's just, it's beating a thousand miles mm -hmm. a minute because that is such a critical area that we have to bring our grades 
up, mm-hmm. right? Up. They have yes. to come up. They have to come up in our communities. They have Absolutely. to come up. Now watch this. This is no disrespect to anybody that listens or who will hear it. If we <laughs> can invest and find resources for our kids to catch touchdowns and for them to dance and for them to do all the other stuff they do, obviously, just that what she talked about, helping them to, to, to calm the storm of their emotions, those are just as, in, as in, um, important, right? So there has to be um, a retooling. There has to be a reshifting of what's important in our homes and in our families, right? Yes. So I, I, use the, I use the example, um, I may be a part of, um, I don't know, I may be part of a, I may be part of a motorcycle club where me and my boys, we go ride twice a week or whatever. That's just whatever. Or I may be part of something that takes me away from the house and away from the family. Well, if I have these issues in the house, those things that I've been doing, nothing wrong with being a part of a motorcycle club, or maybe you're part of a cigar lounge or whatever you guys do that matter. Cause I have those hobbies myself, different hobbies, not those, but different hobbies. Mm -hmm. When you see the need in your home, hobbies like that, things that take away your time and your focus, you have to put them on the shelf and refocus on the issues yes. that are in front of us. Can you talk about that a little yes. bit, Holly? Um, and so in looking at mental health, like those things are important, having yeah. those outlets, having those social outlets. Right. Um, what happens is though, on your way out the door, you almost cancel out that you know this is an issue. Oh. You almost cancel it out like, uh, I know, I know you need a little help, but I have somewhere to be. Um, I, I tell parents all the time, if you don't give discipline, structure, order, direction, the world is going to give it. Yes. And you might not yes. like how the world gives it. If you realize that prisons are built on how many fourth graders are in fourth grade at that time, how, how, how many minority fourth graders determine the prisons that are built and now they're they're talking about moving that down to first grade how many minority children are in first grade that's how we determine prisons then i need to intervene before my child gets to the first grade so they're not on that list so they're not in that reflection i don't care what prisons you build you're gonna have to turn them into something else because we're not using them anymore we're not going to be in there anymore but if i don't look at my house first then it's hard for me to be helpful anywhere else 